QLC Matrix video part two. All right, so in this video, um, I've already introduced the idea of the matrix and what it can do in video one. In video two, now I've just taken 16 very inexpensive uh, RGB PARs. So there are three channels each. You wanna make sure of this, or if you have the PAR, make sure it's running in three channel mode. So we're running in three channel mode, red, green, and blue. And we're gonna create a matrix with these. I have uh, over here, brought up my visual software. So I want to set this up so I have light uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So they're set up that way um, for this. So this is a little tricky, but here's how you go about this. Click on here, hold down shift, click down here to select your group of 16. Now, right click anywhere in the group and select add fixture to group, new group. I'm going to call this matrix. And the size of this matrix is going to be four by four. So that's what I have here is four by four. Click OK. Now, when I go and I click, and see it created a matrix, what I call the group matrix up here, the group. When I click on this, here's my lights. It actually brings them up. So here's address one, address four, address seven, and 10. 13, 16, 19, 22, 25, 28, 31, 34. So again, this is so that QLC knows that everything is in the correct place. You can click and drag things around in here. So if you get heads that are in the wrong position, you simply click them and drag them somewhere else and drop them. Now it'll displace the one that's here and I can reposition it. So you can move things around just using your mouse or using the arrows and get the uh, things where they, they need to be. But just click and drag. Now if I drop this here, I'll put address one here and move 13 up there, and then I just swap here. But as it is here, I actually have all my lights in the correct position. Light one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right, so I'm good to go. I've created my matrix group. So I'm gonna go over into programming now, into functions. And I did do a red scene here just to see what it would look like. And those are all my lights. I put these lights on the back wall facing forward. So they're going to kind of act as like blinders facing forward into the audience. Um, you, could, if you could do whatever you want. If you want to put these up on the ceiling, so they're actually projecting on the floor. So you get sweeping color bands across the band. In this case, I put them kind of in the back of the band, so they're gonna act as kind of like blinders or making patterns on the back wall back there. So let me get out of there. I'm gonna to go to my matrix create, and I have to pick my group, so it's gonna be the matrix group, and immediately you can see now, you're not seeing anything happen here because you have to hit the play button. But as you can see the play button, now you can see this particular pattern running on my lights that are in the back wall there. Now again, and I mentioned in the first video, this is a representation of what's going to happen. It's not exactly what's happening out on the, out on the um, stage. This is exactly what's happening. So I can go to my lights here, change the timing, and you notice that this is not synchronized with this. This is just showing your representation of what you've chosen to do, what it's approximately going to look like. This is what's actually happening. So I can adjust my timing here and we can change fades and stuff like that now you're probably going to find when you're doing this and again i can choose another color for the secondary color here so now when it fills in oops i choose black that's not going to work we're going to need to do blue and we need to be up here secondary color now as you see as it goes through the progression it changes from one color to the next color so again representation over here actually what's happening over here you'll probably find as you try your different matrix patterns here that certain things work really well and certain things don't work really well because again we're looking at a low resolution screen here we only have 16 pixels but it's very easy to create effects very very quickly with this to create the same effect would take you a lot of time but in this case here's my effect created I can just say create sequence. That sequence is done. Let me stop it from playing here. And now if I jump to the sequence, there's my sequence. It did the four steps for me. 
How quick is that? It selected the lights and did the whole sequence for me. I mean, it's so quick to, to actually create effects with this. All right, so let's go back and we'll go back to the same matrix, pick some things here that are going on. Um, I'm going to hit play so we can see what's going on. <clears throat> Stripes, uh, plain color you can do, solid color. You can do uh, text doesn't work too well because we only have 16 pixels, so I wouldn't recommend that. Same thing for image. Audio spectrum, maybe balls, any kind of a shape like balls, squares, circles, those that really work that well. Uh, the blinder you could use. Um, probably want to go to uh, white here for both colors. Or if you want to do a color, some kind of different color blinder. And I'm going to definitely turn up my clock speed here to go faster. All right. Uh, circles, even not. Fill works very, very well. Let's do uh, playback here for the fill. I'm going to um, just change my colors. I guess that was negative color there. And do my pink color here. I'm going to do fill pattern. And we need a timing. So you can see the fill pattern there filling in. Okay, a lot of really, really cool effects that you can do with this. I'm not going to go through them all. Some of the ones that kind of kind of cool are your gradient effects, which this would be ultra hard to actually complete to create on your own. But again, you know, we've created this gradient effect here with this rainbow effect going across. And all we have to do is click on sequence and it'll give me this new RGB sequence over here. I'm going to stop playing here. I'm going to jump to my sequence. And then hit play from here. Look at it. Filled in like 15 different steps for us that we didn't have to go and create. And created that whole rainbow sequence for us. Now, cool thing here is, again, we can go to the clock. And let me just stop it for a minute. Let's do common fade in speed, common fade out speed. And change the fade in and fade out to about 1. Change this to 1. Do this at 0. And see what how that affects our effect here, okay? So now the lights are kind of fading in and out. Gives it a whole different look to it. Whole different look to it. So you can be very creative with this. I'm going to jump back, stop this from playing, jump back to my matrix. Uh, the gradient for that works really, really well. Uh, fill, unfill from center. Let's hit play again so we can see things coming up. Again, just your choice of what you, as far as colors and what you think works really real well there. Some of the plasma effects work really, really cool on this too. This would be something that would be really, really hard to create on your own to do all these different effects. But, uh, you know, using this matrix effect engine here, you can very easily create some really cool effects uh, doing that and just using some simple RGB lights on the back wall. So. So feel free to experiment with this. Try some of the different settings. Again, I would stay away from shapes because we only have a 16-pixel screen here. But as far as creating some of the other effects, it could be uh, really cool for you.